first head over to dolphin-emu.org. Click on the download button and download the latest 64-bit release. Before running the emulator, make sure you have Visual C++ installed on your Windows. Once the download is finished, extract the zip file's contents into the folder you want your Dolphin emulator to be installed. Now before we run Dolphin, we need to make it portable. In order to do that, create a new text document and name it portable with all lower cases inside the Dolphin folder. This keeps all emulator files including configurations, saves and mods all together in one place. Now go ahead and launch Dolphin by double clicking the application. This creates a user folder centralizing all your emulator files. Now let's get to adding games. First make sure you have your GameCube or Wii ROMs in a dedicated folder. In Dolphin double click the main window, navigate to your games folder and click select folder. I should also mention that the GameCube files are usually in ISO format and the Wii ROMs are usually in uh, RVZ format. Next, we're gonna change the general configuration. Click config in the general tab, check enable cheats. Under interface, check download game covers. Then go to view and select grid view to see your game covers. Now go ahead and click on graphics. In the general tab, choose Vulkan. For the adapter, select your main GPU. For aspect ratio, I usually go with the Force 16 by 9 in order to make the widescreen patches work properly. VSync prevents screen tearing, so enable it if you need to. Set the shader compilation to hybrid Uber shaders. Also enable compile shaders before starting. In the enhancements tab, adjust your internal resolution based on your monitor's resolution. My monitor is 1080p, so I'm going for 3x. Upscaling the internal resolution is the most impactful setting on your game's graphics. For anti-aliasing, 8 times SSAA is the best option but demanding. If you are experiencing low FPS, you can lower this down to 8 times MSAA or even turn it off. For texture filtering, 16 times anisotropic is recommended for better visuals with minimal performance impact. For the widescreen hack, we are going to prioritize game-specific patches over Dolphin's widescreen hack for the best results. Only enable widescreen hack when your game doesn't have a widescreen patch. Skip the hacks tab in the advanced tab under miscellaneous, enable crop for cleaner 16x9 aspect ratios. Also check enable progressive scan for improved GameCube visuals. When you're finished, Click close. Now for the controller setup. Unfortunately, Dolphin doesn't support automatic controller mapping, meaning you have to map your controller manually by yourself. Go ahead and click on controller's icon. For GameCube, select standard controller and hit configure. I'm using a PS4 controller, so I'm going to change my device to a PS4 controller. In order to map your controller, click each button in the emulator and press the corresponding button on your controller. You can also check this standard GameCube controller picture for reference. Don't forget to enable rumble by selecting motor and testing it. After you're done, click OK. For Wii Remote setup, if you have a physical Wii Remote, enable Bluetooth and click Sync for automatic setup. If you're using a keyboard or controller, select Emulated Wii Remote. Then configure, manually map buttons, enable Rumble and test it. This is an image of a Wii Remote controller for reference.
keep in mind in the motion simulation tab, map the shake action to a single button like your left stick and it's better to use your right stick for pointing. Relative input provides free movement while disabling it holds the point. You can configure tilt and swing similarly if needed. And finally in the extension tab, map nunchuck C and Z buttons. After you're finished, click closed. Now let's get to enabling per game settings, cheats and patches. In order to explain this topic, I'm going to run some games, starting with Marvel Nemesis. So when you want to run a game for the first time, you're going to right click on the game and select wiki. This opens the game's dedicated wiki page on Dolphin's website. For example, for Marvel Nemesis, it says that in order to fix the vertical lines in the videos, I need to enable manual texture sampling in the advanced menu in the graphics tab. So in order to enable this specific setting for this game, we're going to right click on the game, select properties, go to the game config tab, go to the graphics, advanced and enable manual texture sampling. Keep in mind that enabling this setting only affects this particular game and not other games. Unfortunately, this game does not support any patches so we cannot apply it because there's no patch in the wiki page. But you can always check for gecko codes by going to the gecko codes tab and downloading the latest codes. After the cheats are downloaded, you can enable the them by checking each item. Just remember cheats and patches do not work on the fly and you need to close your game and restart it to see the effect. Now let's go for Spider-Man 2. First, I'm going for the wiki page of the game. As you can see, it says that disabling dual core might fix the skybox flickering problem. It also mentions that using anti-aliasing will not render shadows appropriately. The game also supports widescreen and 60 FPS patches. So in order to apply these certain settings, I'm going to right click on the game, select properties, go to the game config, and under the general tab, I'm going to disable the dual core mode. In the graphics tab, under enhancements, I'm going to turn off anti-aliasing. Now before I add the patches from the wiki page, I'm going to check and make sure that there are no patches in the AR code or gecko codes. As you can see, the patches are already added to the game by default, so I only need to enable them. So after I applied these settings, I noticed that I'm not getting enough FPS. Yes. The reason is that for some games that have 60 FPS patch, you may need to enable CPU clock settings to actually achieve 60 FPS in game. So I exited out the game and enabled emulated CPU clock override in the advanced tab of the config. That made my game run much better. Just keep in mind this setting is not for all games because it might introduce lags or stutters if enabled. So only use this option if your game needs it. Now let's enable patches for games that do not have them added by default. For example, I'm gonna run TNMT2 Battle Nexus. If I go to the wiki page, there is a 60 FPS AR code. So I'm going to copy this, right click on the game, select properties, go to the AR codes, name the patch whatever I want and paste the patch code. That's it, now I can enable it. Now after I have enabled the 60fps patch, I want to also download the gecko codes, which work as cheats. So I'm going to enable the cheats that I want. Then I'm going to start the game. As you can see, the game feels a little bit stretched. That's because we haven't applied any widescreen patch for this game because the wiki page does not have any. So I have no other options other than enabling the widescreen hack. It does not work as good as the widescreen patches in the wiki page, but it's better than nothing. So I'm going to enable it. 
As you can see, I'm enabling the widescreen hack in the per game settings, not the global settings. And that's it, you can change uh, most graphic settings on the fly while the game is running, including the internal resolution, changing anti-aliasing, and other stuff. That's it, I hope this guide was clear and useful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. See you next time.